Joining us now, Peter Morisi, former chief economist at the U.S. International Trade Commission, was with us for the first day, the launch of the Steel on Wheels tour in Seneca Falls. Also with us, Doug Kendall, founder and president of the Constitutional Accountability Center. He's got something to say about the idea of corporate personhood and how that is ultimately a huge barrier to the sort of job creation and innovation that would solve these problems that we're talking about. Doug, what is the, the relevancy of the government's identification of corporations as people to this conversation? Well, it's the Supreme Court's relevance or the Supreme Court's decision that corporations have the same rights as we the people. The idea is basically when the Constitution says that uh, uses the word people or persons, we have to read that term to include corporations in it. And the problem with that is it's a lie. Corporations aren't people. They don't vote. They can't vote. They can't run for office. Yet the Supreme Court in the Citizens United ruling said that they can spend as much money as they want and overrule and overwhelm the voices of we the people um, in in choosing and, and trying to elect the candidates of their choice. That's not the way the Constitution works. The Constitution is about, about we the people. And one of the things I thought was so great about the Steel on Wheels tour, Dylan, is that you started it first in Philadelphia, the birthplace of the Constitution, and you brought it then to Seneca Falls, where the 19th Amendment was first crafted. Um, and you're telling the story of how our, constitutional, our Constitution has gotten better over time. The Tea Party and constitutional conservatives want to bring us back to the founding era where we still had, we had a document that protected slavery, didn't allow women to vote. The story that my organization and I think the series tells is how you be faithful to the Constitution by following all of it and being, um, being faithful to all of it. It's the whole Constitution that is the, the real uh, thing that we have to get back to and have yes. to be faithful to. Uh, you were say, you're saying yes, Peter, why? Well, the whole premise of the American Revolution was to empower the individual and overthrow the sort of corporate state that the British had, to create an environment where individuals could prosper. You know, a third of the colonies were, were, were organized by corporations. Uh, they weren't organized by any government. Uh, and the idea was to throw that off and let, you know, a lot of why George Washington became a revolutionary was because the crown was suppressing his entrepreneurial spirit. Above being a plantation owner, he saw the future in the development of the West, opening up the continent. And the Constitution really was all about that empowerment. If you were to look, Doug, at the, the, the aspect of profitability through a group of people having a, a control of assets, I'm thinking about slave owners, uh, but you could apply it to anything. And, and what really struck me when I was with the, the park rangers at the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia, and you look at that narrative of America in the early 1800s, leading up to the Civil War ultimately, was an engagement about an economic structure that was very profitable for a few people and very bad for a lot of human right. beings. Well, well, Dylan, you just kind of hit the nail on the head in terms of talking about our original document being flawed with uh, its protection of slavery, among other things. We, we changed that with the 13th Amendment. We made our Constitution better with amendments after the Civil War. In the um, progressive era, led by uh, Teddy Roosevelt and other, other politicians at the time, we gave our federal government more power for the specific reason that corporations had gotten too powerful and were having too much influence influence on the outcome of elections in those in that era and we wanted to take uh, election away from state legislatures who were dominating uh, and controlling the, the election of senators and we gave that vote to we the people to have give the people more power to control corporate excesses. Yes, we, we need corporations to drive economic growth in this country, but we give them special privileges and with those special privileges come special responsibilities. That this is a, a repeat uh, of, of human behavior, of a, of a, of a, of a dynamic uh, of the world, that this is not the sky is falling, oh my God, how did this happen? No, 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 we've been to this rodeo before. What was the successful catalyst that somebody like Teddy Roosevelt was able to assert to get the power to do it? It's one thing, because we can sit here and talk all day, but quite honestly, the three of us have no power to affect that change. Someone like Teddy Roosevelt was ultimately able to figure out how to engage and motivate and ultimately activate uh, politically to affect the, the necessary change against Rockefeller, Carnegie, and the rest of them.
Yeah. And Dylan, if I, I could just weigh in here for a second, I think one thing we also need to do is focus a lot more than progressives have been around the courts. Um, if you look at what the Chamber of Commerce has done over the last 30 years, they've waged a very deliberate yes. and aggressive campaign to uh, influence the outcome of Supreme Court rulings, and they're, they're getting their way in a lot of cases. All right, listen, a, a great conversation, guys. I'm uh, glad to initiate uh, the new year on such a level. Peter Marisi, uh, Doug Kendall, thank you both uh, for your time and your expertise.